up? We are back with Behind the Bikini, and we are on episode number 57. We are rolling right into the um, probably the hardest part of the year right now for both of us. <laughs> Most difficult. <laughs> so bear with us if we stumble over words and things like that. You know, we're both in peak week, your second peak week, my first. Um, but before we get moving on all that, uh, like, comment, subscribe, push the buttons wherever they are. And today we're going to talk a little bit about um, the popularity rise of the master's divisions and what's being done and to encourage that and all those kinds of things. So that's the direction we're going to go with today's topic. Um, and then we'll do some fun stuff at the end, too. We got some good questions that were sent in and things like that. So we'll go through that. But before we get into that, how are you feeling today? Uh, we're depleting. So just a little tired today. But yeah. Good. How about you? This is your first peak week. It is. I am. I'm good. Like I, I um, I was saying I'm like I'm a little off today just because it's it's raining, and um, the biggest thing I'm concerned about just between today and tomorrow is the hurricane going through Florida. So you know, in the back of my head, that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> like I just hope that my travel doesn't get messed up tomorrow. That's the biggest thing. I'm like, as long as my travel doesn't get messed up, then I'm good. If I can get to Orlando, I'm, I'm good. You know. So uh, yeah, right now I'm doing all right. So um, I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing with, with Peak this week. So um, last week, my weight really started dropping, like you know, a couple pounds every couple days kind of thing. So like dialing in kind of deal, you know, finally, like, it's like, it was like a pound every day. So, um, right now I am sitting lower than I was when I was on stage or show day for Japan. So, um, that's good. My conditioning is pretty much right where I want it to be. Um, I have not heard back from Jamie yet on my check-in this morning, but she already pre-programmed in food for me for today because, you know, with her being in Arizona, me being East Coast, uh, I tend to get a little bit sooner with my check-ins than, than she gets to them. So she programmed my food in, which she gave me gave me more carbs today. So um, we are starting the fill out process. Not, not a ton, but enough where it's like a little extra and a couple of meals, that kind of thing. Um, I feel I have never been this lean before in my life. Like I have beans everywhere like abs arms chest glutes veins everywhere <laughs> just like holy shit so um i'm looking forward to filling out this is the part that's always like exciting but scary at the same time because it's like i feel like my conditioning is like right where it should be so i'm like nervous to to eat i think a lot of us feel that way going into okay now we gotta add more food you know what i mean so um as far as hunger levels are concerned i'm not hungry i'm good like i haven't had a problem with that at all um, something that I have incorporated the last few weeks that has been a huge game changer for me is I've been doing, and I mentioned this last week is, um, colon massages. So like I've been able to go to the bathroom, no problem at all. Um, for the last couple of weeks, I mean, every morning when I get up immediately, it's, I've never, I've never been this regular before in my life. So we all know if you've ever competed before going to the bathroom is one of the biggest stressors. And the fact that I've been able to clean myself out every day, I'm like, wow, like this is awesome. <laughs> it's like, I, like it just makes you feel so much better throughout the rest of the day. So that piece alone has been really good. Um, when I turned in my check-ins last week in the back of my head, I was like, I think Jamie's going to want me to push through the weekend and do still do cardio through the weekend and all that kind of stuff. And, and I was right. Um, so when she came back to me, that's what we did. So going into Monday, we started tapering down a little bit, not a lot, still, still, still keeping it pretty relatively high just so I can continue to progress. Um, but in general, I feel good. Like, I'm just like, I, I said this, this is the weirdest peak week because I just don't, I don't feel like I've hyper-focused on this prep like I have in the past. You know what I mean? Like I, I just get up every day and I do what I'm supposed to do. I just do it. Like, it's not, it's not like I'm, I'm not like overanalyzing everything. You know what I mean? And typically I do that. Typically I overthink everything, every little detail, every little minor thing. I'm like, Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do it. I'm not doing that. I'm just getting up and I'm doing my job and I'm working like as a competitor and as a coach, like I'm just doing, doing my job every day. And I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm leaving tomorrow. Like I don't, you know, we had a couple of weeks where it was tough in this prep, but 
really it wasn't bad and i just don't i don't know it's just it's it's a weird feeling like i don't even know how to describe it exactly i don't know if you know what, you, what i'm what i'm talking about but that's no, kind of definitely I'm at. Yeah. And it's yeah. just kind of like you wake up and it's just something that you do versus saying, yeah. like, oh, I have to do this cardio today. And where am I going to fit it into my day? And it makes that mindset around it really alters the perception of prep and, yeah. and how, you know, if you're having fun with it, if yeah. you know, it's grueling. And I, I agree with you. I, I feel like I've been that way to this prep where it's just like I wake up and this is what I do, you know, 40 mm -hmm. minutes of cardio, 60 minutes of cardio, 20 minutes. It just, it is what I do. And it's not something I dread. Um, and it, I feel like it really has helped my mindset as well. This prep of not dreading the prep, you know, really embracing yeah. the suck and choosing this and enjoying the process. It's been the most enjoyable prep I've ever had. And just like you're saying, it doesn't take away from our hard work. Of course, there's harder days and days yeah. where or weeks where it's a little bit harder, but that perception it's so small, but it really shifts, shifts the, uh, the mindset around the prep. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's the, it's just, I don't know. It's just so weird. I don't, I don't know. I, I think, I think part of it too is like, I kind of let go and this started last year. I kind of let go of expectations. You know what I mean? Like my whole thing is I just want to be better. Like I don't like, yeah, I would love to, you know, we all know my, my goal is to qualify for the master's Olympia. I would love to do that and everything, but at the same time, I understand that's not going to make a huge difference in my life. What is going to make a huge difference is knowing that I put in the work every day and that I'm coming back better every time. You know what I mean? Like, I just, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just not putting a lot of, I'm not putting a lot of expectations on myself, I guess is what it is. My expectation is that I do my best and that's it. And that's what I've been doing, you know? So I can't, I can't be mad about anything. I can't be upset about anything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's, it's just the weirdest. It's, that's really odd. It's a really odd feeling. This is <laughs> I think, it's our, I think it's a great place to be, you know, I think the <laughs> most fun shows I've ever had and honestly the ones that I won were the ones where I placed no expectation on myself and I just yeah. said, hey, I'm going out there to have fun and that's how I won Charleston and also how I won Hurricane. Like it was like, I, I'm no clue what's going to happen today, but I'm just going out there and having fun and that translates on stage that you're not, you know, over calculating or overthinking. Yeah. You look like you're having fun on stage. I think that's a really great place to be, you know, coming out after a long off season and you know, mm -hmm. as well as I do that you put on a significant amount of improvement. So yeah. you've already, you've already beat yourself, which I think you ought, you know, that too, in the back of your mind, like, you know, you're bringing your best. You're already down from Japan, which we already know was your all time best. So all of these things are pointing to like, Hey, no expectation, but I know I already did my mission, which is I'm coming back better. That's right. That's right. You know, and that's, and that's all I can do. You know, um, I get this a lot from clients. They like, good example was this weekend I had a posing session, a group posing session. One of my girls in the class, she, she's doing a show coming up soon. So what she did was she went and she looked at the photos of the competitors in that show last year. And she was comparing herself to those competitors. And I told her, I said, listen, I said, you can't do that. I said, it's not the same show. It's not the same people. Even if it is the same people, they're going to look different. I was like, you can't, you cannot judge. Am I going to be competitive off of who showed up last year. I'm like, you just, you can't do that because things can change in a matter of minutes, let alone a year. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, you can't like, so I, I think this happens a lot. I think competitors really just kind of, they do. I did that. I can remember when I was an amateur, the show that I chose right before I won my pro card, I went on and I looked at all of the girls in that show to see if I was going to be competitive against them. Yeah. And when I went to the show, that, that I competed in, the girl that won the overall in that show, that was figure, the girl that won the overall in the show that the year before didn't even place. Didn't mm -hmm. even place. She was in my class. She didn't even place. Mm -hmm. She was like, I think she was like bottom of the bottom of the top 10 or something like that. And she'd won the overall the year before. Yeah. So it's like, you literally cannot do that. Like you have no idea. You have no idea. And I know her plan was to go to universe in two weeks, just like mine and compete um, to win a pro card. And she ended up not even going to universe. She ended up not even going. So and probably at a point that was the most one you were worried about. And yeah. there was nothing to worry. There was about. nothing to worry about. Exactly. So that's what my point is like, you can't, the more you analyze, the more you go down into a bunny hole and the more you just mentally psych yourself out more than anything else. You count yourself out at the end of the day. And I've done that yeah. too, especially yeah. when I was you know, getting national shows. I would look up every competitor tagging that show or road yeah. to pro and trying to figure out where they were going and who was in my class and did did did. And I, I would just drive myself crazy. And just like you, like the ones that I was most worried about, it's 
it didn't end up being a worry, you know, for whatever reason, the pictures online weren't matching what was in person or their peak didn't go well. And I showed up better anyways, you know, yep. but if I were to get myself into a mental spiral and count myself out, then I wouldn't have, you know, been able to excel. And, That's right. you know, it's, it's, it's kind of scary because it's not over till it's over until that heel hits the stage. A lot can happen in 24 hours. Even if you're looking at this girl on Instagram, she looks freaking amazing. They can blow the peak in 24 hours and you're showing up a little bit better and you get it. So yeah, mm -hmm. that comparison game, we've, we've all done it, but Absolutely. it is it's a, uh, a lose-lose situation. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just like, you know, that, and that's where I'm at right now. And that's kind of where this topic came from too, with the whole master's division as well because I've not done this before. So I have nothing to compare myself to, you know, I've not, I've not done this before. <laughs> like, so I don't, I don't even know. I wouldn't even know where to start to compare myself. I don't even, I don't even know. So, yeah. but how about you? How are you feeling now that you've gone through what your first show and did uh, you know, how you feeling going into this, the second peak week or is there anything changing? What's, what's your, what's your thought process? Uh, yeah. So, you know, obviously congratulations to the entire top five at Sasquatch. Um, you know, Deanna uh, won the show. She's on Team Fit Body Fusion. Lacey came in second. Um, mm -hmm. Then obviously me in fifth. So, you know, great weekend for Fit Body overall. That's, you know, amazing. Um, obviously, I would be lying if I, you know, said that I was happy with this, you know, the turnout this weekend. Um, a little shocked as well. But um you know, I just keep telling people, you know, I'm just trying to keep the wind in my sails, you know, yeah. and that's, the, it's a constant um, battle, mental, yeah. um, right now for me. Um, um, so anyway, so, you know, I just, last week on that peak week, it was, it was an amazing peak week. Um, I was, you know, really focused, feeling so good, um, having fun. It was such a fun peak week, yeah. um, you know, and uh, check-ins were, you know, so fun and whatever. It was just, it was an awesome show weekend. So, or week, I should say. So this week, I'm just trying to kind of bring that fire back and um, pivot and, you know, keep the wind in my sails. That's what I keep telling people, you know, and it's like, it's that constant battle of, you know, thinking about what happened and getting down on myself and then redirecting and saying, Jordan, that was one show, one panel, like, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, and that's me being vulnerable, you know, and that's, yeah. I think that's for everybody. That's that, you know, that, that battle that I'm dealing with right now. Um, today's a new day. I wasn't going to get emotional today. I promised Jamie I was going to wake up today and, you know, wipe the slate clean. And, and that is my intent. Um, I have not shared my feedback uh, for two reasons. Um, number one, I do want to share it with the behind the bikini first when I do. Um, I have been asked not to share it yet um, as we go into legions. Uh, just a little bit of strategy here. Um, and then after I go to legions, I want to come back on next week and kind of talk about my feed my my um, feedback from Sasquatch and then my feedback from legions comparatively and and go you know from there. Uh, Sean did a recap last night, so it's not hard to kind of see you know what happened. Um, I think the show was one from the back this past mm -hmm. weekend for sure. Um, you know, genetically, I have very short tie-ins. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I have this, this was my all time best. This, this mm -hmm. was my, my best. Also a really great example that even though it's your best package, that does not translate to your best placing. Um, this was one of my worst placings on the pro league since I've turned pro. And, um, I think that's something to remember. I know this happens with clients a lot as well. You know, they come back from a long improvement season and perhaps they get a worse placing than they did before the improvement season. And they're like, Jordan, what the heck? And it's, yeah. it just is what it is for that day. Um, so yeah, we are gonna make some changes this week. Um, we did make some changes this week going into Legions. Um, just trying to get a little bit tighter and um, a little bit fuller, that's, that's the goal. Um, Without going into feedback, I'll just say we're not chasing the feedback. Um, right. We're kind of going off of Jamie's eye and what she thinks from um, visually what's going on in that top four from last weekend, top five from last weekend, and trying to bring me in a little bit better because most of those girls are going right into Legion. So it's going to kind yeah. of be a Sasquatch 2.0. Um, so that's it. You know, I'm just going to try to continue to improve. Yeah. I tend to improve show to show, um, mm -hmm. was another reason why we picked this schedule for myself being the Olympia will be my third show out this season. And usually by show three or four, I'm perfect. We, we have the, the peak nailed down. We're perfect fullness. We're holding fullness show to show. So, um, 
no matter what happens this weekend, it's not a loss. Um, we have nothing to lose at this point this weekend. So we're going to be, you know, making some some interesting changes to try to see if we like it. And if we don't, like I said, you can't, can't get any worse from last yeah. week. So um, we'll see. We'll see how this weekend goes. I'm going to come back out in blue on Saturday. Okay. Uh, we have a comparison of the purple, which I know everybody mm -hmm. loved the purple. I love the purple. I think with the background, I, I wasn't popping as much. I think I kind of fell into the background with that purple suit, but I loved the look head to toe mm -hmm. off stage. Um, but now we got to see the blue with the darker hair as well and see if it's yeah. still got that pop that, you know, that uh, look that I had last season. Obviously, blue is my color, but I also had platinum blonde hair. <laughs> right. Um, so, mm -hmm. so we got to kind of see the difference and, and that's it. So yeah. I will bring all of my feedback. I know everybody's very interested to hear my feedback, especially with some, you know, things that are going on on Reddit with other people's feedback and things like that. I know everybody's very interested to hear my feedback. And like I said, I, I will bring it to behind the first, but I have to get through this week first yeah. and it will all make sense in due time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, that, and that's all completely understandable. You know what I mean? Like even having the emotional response, like that was my, that was my message to you on Saturday. I was like, you know, uh, sit in it, get back to me when you're ready. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you got to allow yourself to process those emotions. You know, it, it's hard. It's hard. Like I was saying before, like placing expectations on yourself. I mean, you saw me break down after Hawaii last year, you know, it's hard when things don't go the way you want them to go, you yeah. know, regardless. And of course we all compete to win. Right. I right. mean, like, you know, I, <clears throat> I was not expecting to win, but I was not expecting fifth, you know, I'll say right. that. Um, and it's, yes, it's just emotionally taxing for, for multiple reasons. You know, number one being it was my best and my worst yeah. place. Number two, it was just not the expectation that I thought. And then number three, you know, it's just structurally, I don't feel like I got any credit for my front post. You know, like yeah. I, I, I just think it was definitely one from the back and that's okay. Like it's totally okay. Like it's, it's like I said, it's, it is what it is. Um, you know, I just feel like between with bikini, like you should be graded you know, 50% from the front pose and 50% from the back pose and both should take account. And then there's also just human nature at the end of the day. Like if I look at those long tie-ins halfway down my leg, they're amazing. They and I will mm -hmm. say too, pretty rare. And you That's had right. about four or five girls yes. in this line up. Structurally Absolutely. and genetically with so of course that's the majority. So that's what the eye is gonna go to. So like mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like I understand it. It just doesn't make it any easier easier no yeah absolutely yeah. you know I, i've always said that about india polino because she has those really long hamstrings that go all the way down her legs you know and that's for her what made her so successful in bikini now the hard part for her is that her waistline just doesn't doesn't match up to everybody else's waistline she's got those long drops in her hamstrings which still puts her into that first call out any show that she gets into but when she goes into it she's tending to be in the top three, top four, because her waistline's too thick. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, like you just said, it's, it's one from the back, but it should be like 50, 50, you know what I mean? Like, like that, that all comes into play. She's got the genetic gift from behind, but she has a big detriment from the front, you know? So it's like, it's like, what do you do when that happens that she ends up in the middle of that top five, you know? So even at her best, she ends up in the middle of the top five. So it's just like, it's it's hard. Like, and you're right. You don't see those very often. I mean, that's why India, again, was so successful for so long because she was the only one that had those. Yeah, you turn you to know? the back and you're like, holy, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's incredible, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, yeah I, uh, I, I was looking at the lineup and I realized when I was looking at the list, I'm like, this is going to go one of two ways. Like, because yeah. Brittany Gillespie and I's physique is very similar. Yep. And mm -hmm. Lee and... Uh, Deanna and mm -hmm. Zin, um, the, the third, third Shin, Shin Yi, Shin, how they yeah. said, yeah, how they said, and it. all have, yep. so I was like, yep. it's either going to be Brittany and I, you know, battling, or it's going to be one of these three, four battling, you know, That's because, right. just because of, of the structure. So, yeah. um, yeah, you know, and then something else too is like, you know, I came out and I did my individual and literally Sandy's jaw was on the floor. I've never mm. seen, she was. <laughs> and they That's were awesome. talking yeah and yeah. I like hit my front post I'm like wow this is like this is cool like she's yeah. you know and when I went up to go get my feedback which makes it even more 
the first thing she said is, oh my gosh, like you have delivered on all of your feedback, everything we've asked from you, that front pose is absolutely dynamite. Like, this is amazing. And then there was a long pause and Jean and I were like, <laughs> and, <laughs> but, <laughs> so, so, so what happened? What, yeah. what, do I, what can I improve on? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and then when yeah. we got the feedback, we're like, Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah. you know, that's, that, again, just something, it's, it's so good. It's so good to hear that and literally see her jaw on the floor, but then just makes it even more confusing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, that's how I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm, I'm turning it around literally every minute. It's a mental battle. And, you know, like this is, this is just me coming on and being, you know, vulnerable. Like, yeah. you know, we, all as pros, we look unattainable. We look like we just show up and we're armor proof. And you know, that like, you know, we're not human. I'm human at the end of the day. Like I am not taking anything away from anyone, but I have very high expectations of myself. And unfortunately yeah. I, I, you know, didn't see that for myself this weekend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the disappointment is real and the um, sadness and the pain is real, but you know, we got to move on. You know, we got to leave that in the past. We have a new show this week, a brand new judging panel, you know, fresh slate and, that's what I'm going to try to focus on. Yeah. But if it doesn't hurt, that means it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like they always say that like in relationships and stuff like that too. Like if you are not broken hearted after you break up with somebody or something like that, that person didn't mean anything to you. You know, it's yeah. the same thing here. Like if you're, if, if you aren't upset, then you did something wrong. Meaning like you probably didn't put your whole, your whole heart into it. When you put your whole heart into something, and it doesn't go the way you want it to go, it fucking hurts, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It does. It and does. the sport is such highs and such lows and high. And we've seen it. You know, we've seen one weekend, you know, someone get in the top of the second call out and the next weekend they're winning a show, you know, and mm -hmm. that's that is the beauty of bikini, right? It's so interesting and anything yep. can change in a week. And but it's such an emotional tax. It's yep. so emotionally taxing and you have to be able to have thick skin and ride those waves. And that's something that I struggle with. You know, I have been very honest about that on the podcast before. Like, I care what people think about me. I place yep. a big I expectation on myself, just like you said, Sean, like I've put everything into this prep last week. I was doing cold plunging and every single day. I'm like, I don't really freaking do this right now, but I want to win. You know, like those are the mental battles you give yourself to push yourself to the next level. And then you go through that and you don't even get anywhere near where you thought you were going to be. And it's, you have to keep going. You know, it's so easy to be like, all right, I'm done. Let's throw in the towel or, you know, maybe I'll have added sugars this week. I'll have my ghosts this week, you know, because it doesn't matter anyway. Like doesn't matter. Yep. that's a, that's a negative mindset, you know, and that's, that's what I was struggling with the last few days is like, it doesn't matter. Let me do. And it does matter because mm -hmm. it's, it's one show, you know, mm -hmm. like keep going, like keep your mindset in a good place. And it's, it's tough. It is. It is. And then, you know, you just put everything else on top of that too. Like I know for myself, I think probably the hardest part about competing is I know that there's a lot of people that look up to me, you know what I mean? So I don't want to disappoint them. Yeah. You know, I don't want to disappoint them. Like the people that, that watch this, you know what I mean? And like, so that always is in the back of my head and it's like, and I know, I know surface level, I understand that they don't care about place things, you know, they don't care. They, what they care about is they, they look up to us as far as like role models, as far as what we're doing. And again, having that champion mindset and pushing through when we want to, when we need to and all that kind of stuff. And I get that, but still we want to go out there and perform well for them. You know what I mean? We want to, we want to do our best. Yeah. And I'm going to get emotional sitting here talking about it. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> we're both in our fields. <laughs> Podcast on peak week is not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I already did mine. <laughs> I know, right? So it's like, you know. You, yeah. Uh, no, this, is the first, this is the first time I felt it, right? I'm like fucking yeah. crying. This is the first time I felt it, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm just talking about how I haven't felt this peak week at all. Now here I am. <laughs> yes. get, get a sign behind the bikini. <laughs> I know, right? So aren't you guys glad you joined us today? <laughs> yes. They're like, all right. Cannot right? wait till they're done with competing. I know, right? <laughs> but this is this is the truth. This is the honest truth. You know? Yeah. We put our we put our hearts and souls into this. We put our whole lives into this. And it's not just for us, you know? Yeah. Well, I feel this way when my athletes, you know, don't place well either. They're expect like my I'm just as crushed as they are, you know, and I felt that too. Like what Honestly, 
honestly, what's keeping me the most sane right now is the amount of text messages and people reaching out to me on social media saying like, I'm so confused. Could you please share your feedback? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. please tell us what they said because we felt like this or we felt like you. And yeah, it, it makes me feel better that <laughs> other people see it too, because it's a lot of messages that I'm getting yeah. like from athletes that are like, please share your feedback. Cause we're just trying to learn like, yep. like our, our, you know, whatever. So that makes me feel better because I was, you know, concerned that I, my, my momentum was, you know, shot, you know, like yeah. there was a lot of momentum for me going into this next season. And it's like, that's not what everybody was expecting, you know? Yeah. So um, the fact that other people are seeing it too kind of helps me, you know what I mean? So, yeah. but again, it doesn't matter. Like it does not yeah. matter say what anybody else sees. Like I got to make sure that, you know, I'm showing up the way that I should to make sure that I'm getting in those higher placings. And Honestly, like these are the moments as an athlete where like you're going to get better or you're going to stay stagnant or get worse, you know, and yeah. I'm going to always get better. And for me, especially, it starts with right here. So, you know, so that's where I got to keep this in check. 100%. You know, and it's funny because like as much as we sit here, we analyze this game and as much as we talk about how we know what the judges are doing, like you said, like you understand that the, your eyes drawn to those long hamstrings and stuff. The first thing that I thought when I saw your back pose was Jennifer Dory glutes. Like that's the first thing I thought, you know, Somebody else is, said that to me too. I think, uh, I think Jamie said that to me. Yeah. That was the first thing I thought. Yeah. And I was like, that is the standard. And I, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting here on my live last night. I'm like, I can't sit here and say she's got Jennifer Dory glutes. Cause that's going to make, make me sound like I'm super biased. <laughs> no, Jamie said that too. in one of my last check-ins before stage, she's like, this is like a gen look. And I was like, yeah. what? Like, no, it wow. is. 100%. Yeah, like what an honor, you know, and, yeah. you know, the one of the very first podcasts you and I done, we were like knocking on my glutes. You were like, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I said to you, like, the, when I turn around, like my glutes are not impressive from the back. Like, right. I don't get that wow factor. Like, I truly, yeah. I am the most hard on myself. And like, when I'm looking at my photos, I'm like, wow, like, yeah. I got glutes. Like I, 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 I was bubbly. I was, you I could have been fuller, but I was pretty full. And, um, that is the, the best my tie-ins have ever looked. Like usually I'm like trying to find a tie-in on yeah. Peakley. They come out yeah. like last second when I'm full. I had tie-ins last three weeks going into the show. So like, just like you are saying about, you know, your best with um, Thailand, Tokyo, sorry, Japan. Uh, Japan. <laughs> um, that's how I felt like the yeah. last three weeks. I'm like, I've never had a tie-in this far yeah. out and, and yeah. a dense tie. You know, yeah. so I knew that this was going to be a really, really good look. So yep. no matter what and whatever happened last weekend, and I told Jamie this off the gate because I wanted her to know too, like she did a fantastic job. Like that yeah. was our best, you know what I mean? Like, and I know some athletes get off the stage and like, I could have been this, I could have, like, I feel like Jamie did her best. Like that was our, our first peak. Like, yeah. could we have been a little bit fuller? Yeah. Honestly, I really don't think it would have made a difference with this lineup right. if I was right. fuller. I um, I think it can going into next weekend. So that's kind of where we're pivoting. Um, so it's, yeah. uh, it's difficult. It's hard. Just like you're saying, like, it's really yeah. hard to kind of make those adjustments. And sometimes it's like, a, if you chase the feedback too much, you get, and you ruin it worse right mm -hmm. and then it's also really important to have a coach with you when you're getting your feedback because sometimes the judges are verbalizing what they want to see but yes. it's not necessarily what the trainer or coach needs to do to give them what That's they right. want to see so it's very hard sometimes to decipher that feedback which is why i'm so grateful that you know jamie's at you know the show in person you know greg is going to your show in daytona this weekend because yes. it's when you're emotional like that you're only hearing what you think you want to hear not necessarily what needs to be done going into 100%. the next so if I took my feedback that I received, I would have done something completely different than what we're doing right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and it's, that's the mind. Block. It's a, it's yeah. mind. It's, yep. it's a lot. <laughs> well, and it's just, you know, I talked about this on the live last night too, with uh, Zoe's feedback from that show and how Sandy told her that her glutes were overpowering, you know, actually, and Zoe was like, no, they're not. They're both right. You know what I mean? Like I was saying that on my live, I was like, yeah, what Sandy sees is just the finished product. She doesn't see where your physique was or where it could be. You and your coach understand what you could have done to make that feedback different. You know what I mean? Like her glutes looked overpowering in that lineup because she was too hard. Had she been a little bit softer, they wouldn't have looked over overpowering like that. And that's why Zoe was saying, I don't agree with her feedback because my glutes are not overpowering. My conditioning was off is what she's saying. So they were both right. You know what I mean? And that's, and that goes back to interpreting your feedback and understanding that, you know, the judges only see what you put up there on that, on the stage that day. You know, I had this happen with one of my clients at masters nationals. <clears throat> um, 
the client came back to me because I was I was out getting pictures and videos and stuff of the girls on stage with awards. My client went back and got feedback from from Sandy. And when she came to me and told me what Sandy's feedback was, I was like, that's not right. <laughs> I was like, that's not right. So I went back and I was like, I was like, Sandy, can you clarify something for me? And I pulled up her photos and all that kind of stuff. And she was like, yeah, this is, she needs either, she, she's like, she needs better conditioning. She goes, she needs to either be denser, more muscle, or she needs to be tighter. I said, thank you. That's exactly right. And I was like, she needs more muscle is what she needs. I was like, perfect. That's what I wanted to hear because that's the correct feedback, you know, but the way that my client interpreted it was not that way, correct. you know? So it's like, it's, it's a big, it's a big deal to that, that it's the telephone game, the telephone game of, you know, this is what they said. This is what they heard. This is what came back to you, you know? Yeah. So, well, and Sandy's really honest and upfront too. Like she'll give you your feedback. And then like, if I'm with an athlete or if Jamie's with me and we kind of give her a look, she's like, just take your robe off and post. So yeah. then she'll be yeah. like, mm, okay. I well, I'm just telling you what I see, but I'm not a trainer. Like she Correct. says that all the time. That's I'm right. not a trainer. I'm not That's a trainer. Right. So she knows that she's verbalizing what she needs to see out of you. But like, if she's saying, I think she needs to be tighter, maybe it's not tighter. Maybe she needs to be fuller, but she doesn't yes. know the difference. She just is trying to say what she wants to see you out see. of us. That's right. 100%. And it is, it's, it's, it takes a really educated coach with an eye to be able to decipher that feedback. And if you're you know, not there with your athlete in person, I, that's why I ask my athletes to record it. Ask record. the judge, Hey, do you mind if I record this? That way I can hear their voice. And if I'm really confused about something, then I'll get on a call with them or ask them to get on a call with me, you know, to, to kind of clarify the feedback so that yeah. I can talk it through with them. Absolutely. Because, because there's been a lot of times in the game of telephone where, you know, they tell the athlete one thing, then I get on a call with them a couple days later and it's like different or variant. And I'm like, mm, okay. So I just need to go, you know, go to the source. Yeah. Next time. 100%. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And that's what, especially when you're at the shows, that's the, that's the benefit. I was like, no, I'm going back and I'm talking to Sandy myself. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh yeah. And like, again, there's sometimes where Sandy's like, I think she needs to be a little bit tighter. And then you, you know, pose in front of her in person. She's like, oh no, she does not need to be tighter, right. but I just need to see more of her, you know, like yeah. pop, you know, and then you're like, okay, so this is maybe like a little bit of a muscle. polish thing or a little yeah. bit more muscle thing. Right. Exactly. And yep. so that's, you know, don't get so zoned in on that feedback of like, this is what she said. So this is what we have to do. I think that's, that's where right. a lot of people go wrong and they chase 100%. that feedback and then they just keep getting worse. And they're like, well, I'm following the feedback. And it's like, you are, but you also have to learn how to decipher the code. <laughs> right. A good example, we had our behind the velvet rope last night. So for my, my membership site, we do uh, monthly uh, webinars. And we had a guest on last night. She was talking about her feedback years ago from Sandy was that she needed to bring her legs down. She interpreted that as she needed to stop training legs. What Sandy was saying was basically you need to be better conditioned, meaning she needed to actually be training her legs more to have more muscle so that she could get rid of the body fat. So she actually did the opposite what complete, she should have been doing complete opposite yeah. right yeah because yeah, she just interpreted it wrong yeah, yeah. and so. so you guys are probably listening and are like oh my god well how do i like decipher the feedback your your coach like your, your coach, coach. 100%. Yeah, your coach needs to help you with this and honestly too like when you're getting feedback it's okay to ask questions back to the judges yep. Um, I asked Sandy some pretty difficult questions, you know, on mm -hmm. Saturday, I asked her some pretty direct questions. I, you know, mm -hmm. and I came out with like, Hey, I'm, you know, do you mind if I ask you some pretty direct questions? And she was like, of course. And so yeah, um, yeah. And she's totally fine with that. And she's yep. not comfortable answering something. She will respectfully say, uh, and, you know, she she won't answer it. Yeah. Um, but to ask questions back. If you're not sure about something like ask for clarification, it's okay. Like these people yep. are huge. They, they are standing there for feedback because they want you to get better. So That's right. if your coach is not there and you're kind of unclear about something or you want a little bit more information, like keep probing, keep asking yes. and feel free to take that robe off and say, hey, can I just show you my front pose? Is this what you want? Do you want something else? Like Sandy will stand there with an athlete for 15 or 20 minutes. She rushes nobody because yep. she wants to make sure that everybody gets good time. Yep, absolutely. So with that, we can kind of pivot into today's kind of topic, which is the master's division. So, um, all right, you guys, we are almost two weeks out from my show. So I have my skin prep ready from liquid sunrays. They've sent me my kit. Um, you have your exfoliating body towel. This is going to make your skin nice and smooth. Um, not too rough on the exfoliating pH balancing body wash, which is super, super important. You want to make sure that your skin is pH balanced. So it's going to absorb your tan perfectly. This is your charcoal 
Sugar Scrub, which is the bomb. This is my favorite product that Liquid Sunrays has right here. And something about this, it just makes that tan really soak in deep. And then last but not least, we have our Liquid Sunrays Body Lotion, which you're gonna put on every single time you get out of the shower, and that's just gonna put your skin into really good condition when it goes to actually get sprayed for the tan. So we're starting this today and uh, making my skin perfect for that tan as we get into the competition season. Division. So um, one of the things I don't think a lot of people realize with Masters is that the majority of people in the NPC right now are Masters athletes. Yeah. The majority. Yes. The majority of NPC competitors that hold cards are Masters athletes. Um, now, I, I have I know reasons why. Um, what are your What are your thought processes as to why that is? What do you what, Why do you think the Masters is getting bigger and bigger? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is financially. I think a lot of people right now aren't competing because of a financial burden, and so older athletes that are more established in their careers and have kind of the extra cash flow are mm -hmm. able to compete. Yep. Um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is I just think there's a lot more opportunity right now for masters in terms of there's pretty much on all NPC stages or some sort of masters, you know, classes or division. And so it's just making it a lot more attainable and realistic for people that are coming into the sport at a later age to go, oh, okay, I can do this. And I can do this with an age bracket that's within my group. Um, so that would be my, my two biggest things. I'd be interested to kind of hear your, your take on that. I agree with both of those. Um, and I want to put a pin in the opportunities thing. So I want to talk about that a little bit more too. Um, but also I think one of the things, like you said, disposable income, that's a big deal. Um, so as we get older, the kids are out of the house, that kind of thing. So we've got the time and we've got the money. Whereas I know when I was 20, I was broke as a joke. So, you know, it just is what it is. You're piecing stuff together to try to do shows. This is an expensive sport and it's only getting more and more expensive. So, you know, as, as we're talking about 20 somethings, they don't really have that kind of money, you know, period. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, it's also a generational thing. Uh, I think that a lot of younger people today want it now, instant. Whereas those of us that are over the age of 35, getting into that age bracket, we know what it means to put work in and we know what it means to wait for the reward versus wanting an instant gratification kind of thing. Um, and bodybuilding is very much a have to wait for the reward kind of situation, you know? So I think it's, I think it's a mindset. Um, I think that's part of it. Um, I also think it has to do with what happens as far as motivation to get on stage. And what I mean by that is back in the day, bodybuilding was a way to, and I hate to say it this way, but show off. Um, it was a way to get attention. It was a way to, you know, be famous or whatever you want to call it, be the Arnold. You know what I mean? Clout. Yes. Yeah. Nowadays you get more of that from being an Insta star, you know, you get more of that from, from being an influencer, all of that kind of stuff. So I think younger generation is drawn more to that aspect of it versus when we're talking about women that are in there that are 35, 40, 45, 50, we don't need the validation from social media. We don't need the validation from strangers. We don't, we're not looking for fame. We're not looking for fortune. We're looking for something that's going to keep us motivated daily. We're mm -hmm. looking for something that's going to keep us, give us a goal every day. Um, that's going to give us something to work towards, to keep us healthy, to keep us fit, to keep us in shape as we get older. Um, and bodybuilding is great for that. Bodybuilding yeah. is great for that. We're not out there looking to, and this is not everybody, but we're not out there looking to be an insta thought. You know what I mean? That's not our, that's not our thing. Like, um, I, I've told you this a thousand times. I would not post as much on, on social media if I didn't have to because of my business. Like, I don't really care that much. You know, I, I do it, I, I do it because I have to, to generate, you know, income and things like that. I was like, but if it was just me by myself, then I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing that, you know? And there's a lot of women out there and men that they just work regular jobs. They have regular lives, they have regular families, and they just want something to go after and want a goal to attain. And this is a great way to do it because, again, it keeps you disciplined and motivated daily. It keeps you working towards something daily. And at the end of the day, you get to say, well, I did this and I and I look great. I feel great. I'm doing this for, for my longevity and my health as well. And that's what bodybuilding gives to those people. 
So I think that it's a combination of a lot of those things. Um, anything else you wanted to add on to that? Because I want to pivot into the opportunities aspect. No, I, I agree with you. I've said for years, like, you know, somebody that's truly bodybuilding because they are enjoying the journey, they can do it without social media involved, you sure. know, and I there's, you know, some people that do it for the clout and posting yeah. on social media and like, look how cool these veins are. And I agree with you. Like if I, I, I barely post on social, it is most of the time I'm posting my athletes or, you know, after a show and things like that, like I do this every day because I enjoy the journey. Like this, just like we were talking about in the beginning, like this is what I do, you know, even in the off season, I'm going to wake up and do my cardio because that's what I do. And that's what keeps me the most healthy. And that's why I'm so appreciative. I didn't find this sport when I was younger, because I wouldn't have the finances, the time, the financial freedom to, to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I do think that social media plays a huge part in that. So that was a very interesting take on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, I think that what's happening now is like you were saying, the opportunities are growing as well. I think promoters are starting to realize that there is a sector of the com of competitors, which are masters competitors, that need to be catered to, because they are bringing in the majority of the revenue. <laughs> just just being honest, you know, like when it comes to shows and things like that, and you look at these classes, the bigger classes now are masters. The bigger classes now are masters, and even if the open has more people, half of them are masters. I mean, you saw it at, at Sasquatch. It was a Sasquatch big lineup, and at um, Battle of the Bodies, honestly. Yeah. Like in the, yeah. in the NPC divisions, like the masters was more competitive at that show than, than the open was. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the promoters are starting to realize, okay, we need to do something for these athletes because they're the ones that are, that, that are keeping our lights on, mm -hmm. you know, they're the ones that are actually investing into the shows. So, you know, you see that now and, um, you know, we have the Masters Olympia now, which I think is amazing. And I think that those opportunities are just going to get better. I think that, um, you know, this is something that I thought was pretty interesting because, you know, I said this on my live last night. I was like, do you guys want me to start covering masters? And I cannot believe the number of comments and DMs I've gotten since I asked if, if they want me to cover the masters pro divisions because I haven't done it. And I'm like, well, now almost every bikini show out there and men's physique too, almost every single pro show has open and masters. Wow. And so when you start looking at the calendar, it's like, this is, this is something we got to start paying attention to more, you know, because I do feel like the Masters competitors can be competitive in the open too. You know, we look at people like Jessica Wilson, who won the Masters Olympia, but she's also won pro shows, open pro shows. So <clears throat> it's, it's, it's definitely something that we need to be paying more attention to. Now, I don't think we have the depth in the Masters division yet. Um, I think that, you know, because typically I, I review like the top five in the open. I think that if we were to do that in the masters, we would see a lot of variance because a lot of the, the pro shows, they have five or six girls, you know, and that's it. But I think if we start looking at the winners of these master shows, I think we can start creating like almost like a blueprint of a, of a Jennifer Dory, you know what I mean? For the masters. Um, so I think that, I think that that's, that is something I'm going to do because the other part of it too, is that I specialize in working with masters competitors as far as a coach is concerned the majority of my clients are masters so i think giving that spotlight myself is something i can do it's something i can do on my channel you know um and i think that that's something that the again the promoters are starting to realize a little bit more um this is something that i've actually catered to with my cuties car from the stage event every year i look at sponsors and who these ladies can use you know what i mean that's there's a reason why i bring in you know, plastic surgeons and that do like Botox and all this kind of stuff. There's a reason why I bring those people in because we need that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. I think that if, if, if promoters start kind of opening up their, their eyes of, okay, we're, we're, yeah, we still want to do the supplement companies and stuff like that, but let's look at what these older women and these older men actually need. You know, when we're talking about hormone replacement therapy, you know, we're talking about all this kind of stuff. We can open up a whole new, a whole new genre of, of sponsorship and people that are interested in this sport, if we just kind of open up that, that, that master's box, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your thoughts? No, totally. I mean, I, I would say about 65% of my current active roster of athletes is masters, yeah. um, you know, whether that's 35 or yeah. you know, 
or 60. I have a 60 year old. I have BB pro that just turned pro at masters nationals. this year. She's freaking amazing. She has an eight pack. Like I'm like, like they're incredible. You know, yep. I'm, I love that the master's divisions are becoming something more and more prevalent. Um, and it's like you said, pulling out people from the woodwork of like, oh my gosh, I can do this. And they are going to be the, the bread and butter of the NPC over the next few years. I truly, truly believe that. So I want to make sure that, you know, promoters are providing a space for them, which I believe there are yeah. you know, more masters age groups in, in the NPC divisions than I've ever seen. Um, and I think it's only going to continue. I also think as a coach, it's, it's a fun challenge. You know, it's not just about adding muscle to be quite, quite frank, you know, masters athletes add muscle a lot easier than, than open because yeah. of that muscle maturity. Um, they're a little bit more willing to listen and not so yep. like set in their ways when it comes to training. Cause most of them are coming to us and saying like, Hey, like, I really want to do this. I have no clue what I'm doing. Like, just tell me what to do. And they're just taking it and being so coachable and growing so well. But there's also as a coach, it's very interesting because you're dealing with other things that make it a little bit more difficult, but helps like with us and our education, our brain, like the skin factor, pelvic floor therapy, making sure that their waistline stays nice and tight. How do we make everything bigger, but keep the waistline smaller? Like, Mm -hmm. so it's fun. It's, it's, it's really, fun to, you know, work with masters athletes as well, because it's a little bit more of a challenge as a coach. Um, and, you know, seeing what, which is your specialty, kind of the whole glam process come to light too, because that can really make or break a master's athlete on stage, 100%. the makeup, the color of the suit, is it going to make them look youthful? Is it going to make them look older? Like there's so much that goes into it. So as a coach, it's very exciting as well yep. to kind of see, you know, if I would have yeah. came out at you know 40 45 like I would hope that my coach would kind of understand all of these things because it really does make a difference with the master's division so it makes it a difference in any division but especially with the master yeah and that's you know because that's typically when we're talking about feedback that master's athletes are getting it's something along that line where it has to do with skin texture or something like that because in general most master's athletes have a pretty good foundation of muscle usually So it's more so about kind of shaping that muscle. Um, And then, like you said, the skin elasticity and things like that are where you see the difference between somebody who's going to place first and somebody who's going to place second. So those are completely different than a girl that's in her 20s. Yeah. And with that, more of that that financial freedom for them, too, of like, hey, like, I think we need to go do like a Morpheus eight. And they're like, okay, yeah. no problem. You know, but yeah. if I needed that from maybe perhaps a younger athlete that had like a weight loss journey and then we're working, you know, and they have a little bit of skin, they sometimes can't afford that. Like they're right. making it by with their coaching, which I respect every single one of my athletes in their checkbook. If I tell them to do something, it's because I truly think that we need it, need to take it, et cetera. Um, Absolutely. You know, so that, that also is very helpful as a, you know, coach when you're dealing with somebody that's like, I'm financially sound. Where do you yeah. want me to be that weekend? I can travel anywhere. Yep. Obviously, that's a lot easier for us as, yeah. well as coaches. Well, you, like you said, like just simple things like the hormone therapy and like we do a lot of, you know, work with peptides and stuff like that too. I mean, that's what, those are all things that we can do pretty easily and successfully with master's athletes, which is really crazy. I've got a few clients that I'm just amazed at the progress they've been able to make just by making little tweaks like that. It's just unbelievable the amount of progress they can make. So it's, it's like you said, it's fun. Like it's fun to figure that stuff out. It's fun to figure out what's going to make them feel good you know, feel good, look good and perform well, yeah. you know, those are all the, those are all the things. And again, we go back to, you know, when I do my check-ins and stuff, I get, you know, the, the, the last line on there is, you know, tell me a victory or something like that for the week. Tell me a winner. Yeah. Yeah. And, and most of the time it has to do something with like, they're like, well, my, my, my kid is really proud of me or they just want to see me have, have fun on stage or, you know, I can't, my, my, my husband is my biggest cheerleader or whatever it might be completely different kind of victories than what we hear from the younger generations. You know what I mean? And it has to do with their, their life outside of bodybuilding. It has to do with their life in general and how much it's, it's improving their overall, their overall life just in life. general you know, yeah. it's, it's inspiring. It's cool. It's like, I, I love hearing that kind of stuff every week. Cause it, it sparks, it sparks for me too. You know, I'm like, as much as this is helping you out with your victories and everything like that, it helps keep me focused for you as well. Knowing how much it's actually improving your life, you yeah. know? And there's nothing better too, as a coach, when you read a check-in like that and you're like, damn, I'm doing something right. Yeah. You know, like, 
I'm doing something right as a coach. Like not only are we looking incredible and we're going to be hitting the show, but like day to day life, you're feeling better. You love the way you look, your family's noticing, your kids are proud of you. Like that's truly our job as a coach is to leave that athlete better than when we received them 100%. at the end of the show, at the end of the reverse diet, when they decide that they're done with all of this, like, are we going to leave that person better than when we found them? Absolutely. And so I love those, you know, my, one of my last questions, my thing is, what was your win for the week? And I love those. Mm -hmm. reminders. My kids are proud of me. My husband acknowledged that my glutes are great. Like that yeah. is amazing. I learned today that I can, you know, track this favorite food or this favorite recipe in my macros and I'm eating it and sticking to plan. Like those are the moments that I know we're doing our job right. Yeah. hundred percent. And I love yeah. that. And it's like, and again, it's just, it's, it's that goes beyond the trophy. Like when we get, when we get in our feels, our peak week feels, <laughs> <laughs> it goes like, okay, this is actually like this. These are the things that keep us pushing through. You know, these are the things that keep us engaged and involved. And, and, and again, just, just making sure that we're doing the best we can for ourselves and for, for you, you know what I mean? So for our um, people. Yep. yeah, for our people, our people. So I, you know, again, I love the direction of that. And I, and I hope that more and more um, promoters and things like that get, you know, kind of get the memo, you know what I mean? And, and to give more opportunities, give more options, give more sponsorship deals, more, you know, prizes, all of it, you know, start opening up your mind and say, okay, where can we take this? Because this <laughs> is, this, these are the people, again, these are the people that are keeping the, the doors open, the lights on. You know, so let's, let's see how we can make this a better experience for them in general, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Absolutely. even my, you know, even myself, like I'm excited about this weekend, um, getting on the master stage for the first time. And it's almost like, you know, when I, when I was looking at the list for the open, I'm like, I am so excited. I get to be on stage with these girls. Like, I'm not even like, I need to qualify for the Olympia. That, that, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I'm so excited to be on stage with these girls, you know, like, I, I'm like, it's going to be fun. And I think that a lot of ladies like me that are in their forties and stuff like that, think that way, you know, they're like, I just can't wait to get on stage with these people. You know what I mean? Like we have, a, again, just a kind of a different goal and a different mindset going into this. And, and, um, that might be why my Pete, my, my whole prep this time has been different. I don't know. <laughs> it's the mindset. <laughs> It's the mindset. It is. And it's, it's the mindset. You know, creating that realistic expectation, but you know, going in and having fun, like it yeah. really does make all of a difference. It sure does. It sure yeah. does. Absolutely. It's really cool. So, I'm um, excited. Else for that you. you wanted to thank you. So, anything else you wanted to add on to this to the masters discussion? I don't think so. I think we covered okay. it. We love well, our masters end, athletes. We love our masters. Let's end it out with. Uh, we'll go through these would you rather's. I've got them um, saved from um, the question that came in. So let me pull it up real quick. Hang on. Somebody commented this on our channel and gave us some, some would you rathers. So we'll finish out with some would you rathers. Just, uh, um, <laughs> so when funny. you have to ask a question, would you rather have to speak in riddles or sing every sentence? What would you, what would you rather do? Would you have to speak in riddles or sing every sentence? I'm going to say sing every sentence because I like yeah. very clear communication. Yeah. Riddles. Yeah. My, husband, I w my husband talks in riddles. That's plenty. He's right <laughs> That's here. so funny. <laughs> yeah. Somebody my, my asked husband. a, a would-you-rather question. Would you, Drew, here, you can, ask, you can answer there this. You go. Yeah. Would you rather – you have to speak loud so we can hear you. Would you rather have to speak in riddles like you already do in your entire life or sing every sentence? I like my life how it is. So he would rather speak in riddles. <laughs> riddles? I yeah. To read my mind. <laughs> he, said, I, he said, could you learn how to read my mind? <laughs> that's too funny. I think that Dan would probably say the same thing. Like, I don't know if you saw the reel that I put up yesterday, but he, uh, like, I was just talking to him. I was just trying to make something funny, and he's, he turned it into this whole, like, teaching moment, right, where he's talking about, he said, uh, mediocre people don't like high achievers, and high achievers don't like mediocre people. So, again, riddles. <laughs> it's always, it's always something. Everybody's, like, commenting. I thought it was great for a, a reel. But I was like, everybody's commenting on it. That's awesome. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, yeah, imagine, imagine him talking to you like that all day, every day. <laughs> I can tell you talking shit. <laughs> can you hear oh, him? He can't, he, yeah, I can hear him. I don't think he can hear me. No, she's talking crap. Just by her no. facial expressions. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get yeah, shot. I'm going to get shot by a Dawn power soaker. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> um... I just, I didn't think about the fact that he can't hear me because you've got your earbuds in, but I can hear him. That's so funny. But he knows from my... Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, I would definitely sing. Same thing. I would sing everything. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do the riddles thing. Maybe it's a guy thing and a girl thing. Who knows? Maybe. Or it's your. You know, you do have a musical background. So yeah, I do have a musical background. So there's that. There's that. Um, okay. Would you rather have your arms dangle to the floor because they're really long, or because you're really short? I, I would rather have them dangle to the floor because they're really long. Me I don't too. Want to be short. Yeah, I don't want to be short because. Yeah. Regardless, if you're short and they hit the floor, they're still long for your body. I mean, also, what's short? Because I'm short. I'm 5'3 compared to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I would much rather have long arms because then you could reach up and get things and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But I feel like that would be an advantage. Yeah. I feel like I, that would throw the proportion off, too. Yeah. Like, you have might, really long arms, but you're also really tall. Versus, yeah. like, being really short with a really long arm. Yeah, which I mean, which one is better? I don't know. I, I think I, I these are I, really I, good. Whoever yeah. this is, I know, right? This, oh, this is my athlete, Lolo. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> I was like, what is uh, this? let's see. Would you rather have to fight one bear-sized squirrel or a hundred squares squirrel-sized bears? <laughs> Wait, hold on. I mean, this. I know this is peak week, but would you rather have to fight one bear-sized squirrel? Or a hundred hundred squirrel sized bears. <laughs> um I, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go with a hundred squirrel sized bears. That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Because I, I feel, feel like, like I, I just... could pick them up and throw them. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a hundred squirrel sized bears versus one big guy. Yeah, one I feel like squirrel. I feel like a big squirrel Although... would be mean. A, see a big squirrel though like what really is their attack mechanism i don't know they might bite you or claw you or something that would still hurt rabies yeah <laughs> it'd still hurt if a squirrel bit you especially if he's a bear if he's a <laughs> especially if he's i'm gonna go with a hundred a hundred yeah. squirrel sized bears same i just feel like i would be able to manage them because i could like step on them and like throw them <laughs> get them away from me <laughs> i'm gonna throw i'm gonna throw a fire uh fire spark yeah right 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 yeah yeah blow them up <laughs> and then the last one is would you rather be a zombie in, in a zombie apocalypse or a robot apocalypse hmm i feel like i would do the zombie because i feel like with robots you never know what their what their attack would be you know they're thinking, the less predictable yeah i'm thinking terminator you know and every yeah. time that you try to kill a terminator they got something else they can they keep they coming out at you. i agree with that yeah, whereas with zombies, it's like you just know you just have to cut their heads off or whatever, whatever the particular zombie. Yeah, whatever the particular zombie like variation is. <laughs> Once you figure out what they're what kills them, then you're done. You know, yes. maybe they may be really fast, but I feel like a robot could be really fast as well. You know, the only thing I would say is maybe with a robot, you could not outsmart it, but find a way to shut them all down and save yeah, the world. True is with a zombie it's like once you're defected you're defected yeah 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 well the thing with infected, zombies too defected yeah infected but infected. i think with the zombie the zombies though there was i can't remember how it ended with world war z that was the one with brad pitt and i can't remember how the you're the scary movie ended. gal i don't watch i've that. watched i've watched every zombie movie i'm a big zombie person like i would rather watch a zombie movie than than a robot movie so hence um, hence why you feel very confident with the zombies then correct i think i would be able to manage that i think i'd okay. be able to manage that so um, when the apocalypse comes can you ask <laughs> the aliens to send the zombies and not the robots that's right i'm gonna get the the aliens to kill the zombies that's what i'm there gonna you go. do yeah, I'm just, them again, help us. every podcast, I figure out a way to save the world. Every podcast, I figure out. I know. Thank you. At least somebody's paying attention to that when they're in peak week. Not me. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm still I'm still not 100% confident on my choice of the 100 squirrel bears <laughs> or, or the one big squirrel. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still not confident in that one. And you have to, you have to know what uh, variation of squirrel it is, too, because they're flying squirrels. So, yeah, oh see, that gosh. would be a big ass fucking. I have so many squirrel. questions. <laughs> no, but Warren. What, would be, what would be worse if, they, if you had one big, huge flying squirrel or a hundred of them? Because then they'd be like bats, but like squirrels. <laughs> I need a really big gun. <laughs> <laughs> right? I just, 
just yeah. machine gun. Yes. <laughs> like a machine gun. Maybe my a really big gun I fire know. launcher or something. Oh, that's so funny. That's see, that's the other part of that question too. It's like, what do you have to defend yourself? That's another. That's a thing too. That's what it's I'm like, saying. You, I have so many yeah. questions. <laughs> if you've got a gun, then what kind of gun is it? Is it a machine gun, or is it a handgun, or is it a pistol, or or a, or a like a rifle? Who knows? If it's this a rifle. Just like biki- the bikini division. It's like yeah, it depends. <laughs> it depends. If it's a rifle, then I'd rather have the big the big squirrel because you got like one shot and that's yep. it. You can't kill a hundred squirrels with with a rifle. No, no, it's not gonna happen. You know, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Smack them. <laughs> but if it's a machine gun, you just go <laughs> and you're done. You're good. <laughs> All right, these are good. Uh, Lauren, were. you got to keep coming yeah, up with these. I these know, are right? Good. I was just saying, like, ladies that watch this, I mean, this kind of stuff's perfect. Throw it in the yes. comments. Throw it in the comments. So, this is fun. and that was that was actually perfect timing because we're at about an hour for the podcast. I know you've got a busy day today. I do too. I fly out first thing in the morning tomorrow Same. so i'm like I, i'm looking at <laughs> thank you yeah the, the hurricane i'm just like i just got an email i didn't even know there was a hurricane coming i love not living in florida anymore but <laughs> i just got a hurricane from my or a hurricane a notification from my old nail salon that they were closing because of the hurricane yeah. so the good thing is is that my house in florida in terms of daytona is yes. very far away from daytona and i think that's more of where it's hitting so yes it is. Be so okay. the, yeah, the, the, the hurricane is going up the Gulf Coast. So like yeah. Daytona is going to get rain, but they're not going to get the brunt of the hurricane. Yeah. Um, I am flying into Orlando, which is a little bit more inland, but it's still it's more inland from the Gulf Coast too. So it's it's still not going to get hit as hard as, as the coastal region is going to. Right. So I'm not really concerned about that aspect. I'm concerned about the flights. I'm concerned about the flights getting in tomorrow. I think that the the hurricane is supposed to hit its hardest Thursday afternoon, and I get in I get in Thursday morning. So I'm just praying that I get out and get in before the the brunt of that hurricane hits. You yeah. know, and 100%. then I'll be fine. And yeah. then I'll be fine. So as long as I can get out, like because they even sent out an alert yesterday at American Airlines. They even sent out an alert like if you want to change your travel plans. I was like, no, I got I've got the best possible option right now. Yeah. You know, so as long as I can get in um, that morning, because it's super early, it's a direct flight. Like I said, I got direct flights. So I didn't want to go to Daytona and have to connect. If I had if I'd had that Daytona flight, I'd have to go through Atlanta to get there, and I'd been screwed. So, right. We're not doing that. Um, and then by the time we get to Friday, we're fine. You know, it's just going to be rain um, by Sunday. And I was like, well, that sucks. I'm going to be in Florida on the beach. And it's going to be raining the whole time. But on Sunday, it's supposed to be nice. It's not supposed to be raining anymore. So that's my one day that I have to relax. <laughs> so I'm like, perfect. okay. I'm like, I have to deal with rain and my tan, which sucks. But the hotel has valet and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that won't be an issue. I'll get a, I'll get myself an umbrella and a poncho and I'll be fine. You know, so hopefully we'll do, do, do what we got to do, you know, do what we got to do. Yeah. So, yeah. well, good luck. We're all you. rooting for you. Absolutely. You. Go and same to you. Same to yeah. you. So when you fly out tomorrow morning or when do you fly out? Yep. Tomorrow morning. So we land in Reno at like 10, 10, 11, or something like that. So we'll have pretty much the entire day there. I just got my response back from Jamie. So I'm sure yours will be coming. Yeah, I, no, I got mine too. While we're, while we're sitting here, it came in. So yeah. it's, been, it's been sitting there for the last 22 minutes. <laughs> so like, I want to take a look at that and see what she yeah. wants me to, to do today. Same, same, yeah. same. Because as soon as I get off here, I got to go hit whatever she wants me to hit. So exactly. Um, so with that said, guys, thank you for being along with us. We had fun. We had some vulnerable moments. We This is a this kind of podcast. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, but we really appreciate all of your support. We appreciate all of your listening, um, all of your comments, all of your everything. Um, we do read everything. And then even in the, the Instagram, we're getting a bunch of comments in there too. So thank you guys. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, send in your uh, questions and your topic ideas too, because that's where we get our topic ideas is from you guys. So with that, we are on episode 57. And we're gonna we're gonna be out because we got we got we got peak week we got things to do. To do. <laughs> we got pink week things to do. Bye guys, have a great week and uh, we'll see you next week.